my name is Selma and I come to you from San Francisco Bay Area where I live with my husband and our senior dog Boney uh, and this is a podcast about knitting uh, everything everything fiber related but also a little bit about books gardening stationery and fountain pens if this is something uh, that you find interesting, welcome and come join me on my yarny adventures. Thank you uh, for your uh, views, subscriptions and nice comments that you left on my last video. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, today is the first day of the new year, uh, 2024. And this is actually second time that I'm filming this podcast. I filmed it yesterday um, uh, on the last day of 2023, uh, hoping that I will have it uploaded for today so that you can watch it and enjoy your, your first uh, day of the new year. However, um, unfortunately, uh, my camera had some problems and it didn't record uh, the whole like second half of the video so I decided to film it again uh, on this first day of the new year I would just uh, invite you to think about those that are not as privileged as we are to be in our cozy homes knitting enjoying good food uh, those that are suffering in armed conflicts uh, that are refugees that are mourning uh, their loved ones or are wounded and in hospitals. Uh, also, if you can, uh, donate to organizations that provide medical and humanitarian aid to armed conflict zones. Thank you very much for that. Um, today, I would like to talk about uh, Finnish objects that I have. And first, I will talk about what I'm wearing. And what I'm wearing is a Felicity sweater. Uh, Felicity sweater is a design uh, by Yamagara, um, Bernie Slim, uh, who is uh, a designer from Singapore. Uh, if you don't know uh, who she is, please go check out her Instagram, her website, also her Ravelry page. She's an amazing designer, uh, creating very sophisticated, kind of luxurious looking uh, designs. Um, I like uh, her designs not only because they have an amazing construction, um, like beautiful aesthetics, but also uh, because they are very practical uh, for me living in California. Um, it, uh, so she usually designs in like fingering weight yarn which is something that's like i can wear throughout the year here um uh, although i love knitting in like um heavy weight yarn um uh, i unfortunately cannot wear these garments as much as i can wear fingering weight yarn um garments so felicity sweater is a uh, beautifully constructed sweater uh, knitted top down first flat then joined in the round and uh, knitted like in the round with stockinette stitch uh, it has these nice uh, bell-shaped uh, sleeves uh, that are set in sleeves and shaped with short rows and I have to say that Bernice is really um, uh, a magician of short row sleeve shaping so they are just perfect and um, sleeves then increase a little bit and and with this nice uh, lacy panel uh, and at the end of the panel there is an i-cord edge so i decided to uh, do a modification and knit a uh, lace panel in Suri alpaca instead of uh, uh, like main color yarn and i also added this little ruffle uh, at the end of the collar to give it kind of more romantic and flattering look um, 
so this sweater is uh, knitted in uh, yarn that is generously um, gifted to all test knitters and I was one of the test knitters uh, by Tamasan from uh, Knitters uh, Without Borders um, and please go check out her beautiful shop. She's a Japanese lady uh, living in the United States so shop is uh, United States based and um, they have lots of like beautiful hand dyed yarn uh, that is hard to find in other shops here for example Maminaki uh, which is one of my favorite uh, yarn dyers uh, I was ordering directly from Germany and sometimes um, like shipping can be expensive or like it travels forever um, uh, but uh, Knitters Without Borders yarn shop has lots of Mamanaki yarn and uh, this particular one is uh, their sock base uh, which is combination of German merino and sustainable uh, polyester uh, which is biodegradable um, and this uh, particular color colorway is uh, cherry pie and it's this beautiful kind of ochre with some rust and red details uh, as well as some like grayish and brownish specks um, and uh, Tamasan was very generous so I have one skein left that I plan to knit uh, a socks with <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me uh, the Suri alpaca on my sleeve uh, is from Ocean by the Sea, also in the dyer UK based. Um, however, I haven't seen if uh, she is still active. This is a yarn that I had uh, in my stash from kind of several years ago. Um, I really love uh, Felicity sweater and how it fits. Um, I knitted it. Uh, uh, in the recommended length which, which is usually for me given my bust size a crop length uh, and uh, I usually modify patterns to knit like several like one two inches uh, longer and I decided not to do it with this one so I knitted it in recommended length and it fits perfectly and as you can see I can wear it with my um, lean and high waist skirt uh, from Pine and Smith uh, clothiers, sustainably made. Uh, this is their Balmoral uh, check. So um, this is uh, my Felicity sweater and I love it so much that I already plan to knit another one and I ordered a yarn for it. Uh, which will be a combination of Biobalance uh, from BC Garn, which is a combination of uh, uh, cotton and wool and it's lace weight yarn, uh, which I plan to uh, hold together with uh, another lace weight yarn, which is Rowan Cashmere Haze, uh, which is a combination of uh, alpaca, cashmere and silk and uh, it's very very soft uh, and soft to skin um, and a great alternative to those who are allergic or sensitive to mohair. Um, this is pretty, as, big, as it is cashmere blend, it's pretty expensive. However, I was able to find, um, uh, to find it uh, on like Friday sale for really good uh, amount of money uh, so um, I plan to uh, knit my second Felicity sweater in this combination and I really like this sweater because it's so versatile I can wear it um, at my work um, I can also uh, wear it when I go see my friends for a coffee or when I um, uh, go run errands like with jeans or like with more like smart uh, looking like pants or skirts so uh, I really love it 
Okay, so I'm sorry if you can hear squeaking sounds. That's my chair. Uh, I didn't realize that it's so squeaking until I started um, recording. Uh, but I hope it's okay. The next finished object is a zipper sweater slash cardigan that I knitted uh, for my husband. So this zipper sweater is pretty famous uh, petite knit pattern and um, uh, it starts with uh, Judy's uh, magic cast on uh, and then you need one by one uh, rib uh, for this lovely collar. Uh, normally uh, the zipper goes like maybe 10-15 centimeters, uh, maybe longer. Uh, uh, it's a reglan construction and then uh, after um, you divide four sleeves you uh, join in the round and knit in the round. So I modified it to be a cardigan meaning that uh, after uh, uh, dividing for sleeves, I was knitting back and forth uh, flat, meaning lots of knitting and lots of purling, which I actually enjoyed. And uh, my husband uh, works from home and he has had his favorite cardigan uh, that was hand knitted but actually bought from the store uh, that he really loved and is now kind of like very old and worn out and I wanted to need him a replacement and he wanted something very similar or almost identical to that sweater which is why we choose zipper sweater uh, as a pattern to follow uh, I knitted it in size XL uh, uh, I think that the most interesting part uh, is actually the zipper band uh, that I did so that I uh, picked up stitches along the button band and then um, per pattern you leave like five stitches on each side uh, for zipper band and uh, then you need this uh, zipper band flat and I was picking up like one stitch when knitting and one stitch when purling uh, from what I picked up so that it gave this like really nice really nice zipper band it looks very neat um, sorry I still didn't uh, like weave in uh, the ends uh, I'm still struggling finding a zipper uh, with the adequate length uh, color and um, I wanted it to be I wanted to be um, like metal zipper, I don't like uh, plastic zippers. So uh, Petit Knit has uh, zippers available, but it seems that all of them are too short for my hubby's uh, body size. So I'm still looking for a good zipper and I don't have any like haberdashery nearby. Uh, so I plan to visit Oakland uh, in the next couple of days to see uh, if, I find, if I can find any zippers over there. Um, this uh, cardigan is knitted in Nutiden yarn and um, as you all know uh, Nutiden is unspun yarn um, that is created by Honer Ein uh, Rocker uh, from Sweden which is like a couple's own uh, small business um, and I uh, I forgot the name of this colorway but I will put it in the description box and um, I used two strands of Nutiden uh, along with one strand of uh, cashmere uh, haze uh, from Rowan uh, that I bought as I mentioned on Black Friday sale um, and it really gave this like beautiful squishy fabric uh, also to um, for the stripes uh, I used uh, Plotulopi for white stripes I believe that the colorway is oat um, or oatmeal and uh, the middle stripe is in uh, woolen twine 
uh, unspun yarn thrive in colorway rye. Um, all of them held double with a strand of cashmere haze. Um, I was playing yarn chicken, so I ended up not having enough nutiden uh, to finish the sleeves because I bought uh, 500 grams, which would normally be uh, enough. However, Bony, my dog, uh, really loves <laughs> nutiden, um, I believe, because it's so squishy and it's so sheepy. So she played with one uh, plate um, and I was able to salvage most of this plate, but not all of it. And I believe that that's exactly what was kind of missing here. So I used um, uh, Rauma Finul uh, that I got in uh, stash went uh, last year in like yarn exchange with a dear friend Vibeke who is Knit Pearl on Instagram um, and uh, I held it I held one strand of Rauma Finul with one strand of Nutiden and one strand of Cashmere Haze for kind of ending the sleeves and, uh, and sleeve hem which is in one by one rib um, so um, I know that lots of people find it very frustrating to knit in unspun yarn and uh, Nutiden yarn as you all know um, is very different uh, and like uh, each, co each collection is very different and each colorway is very different from the previous one and there, there are no two that are alike they differ in like yarn blends in like color in lots of other kind of qualities um, and this particular yarn blend was very soft uh, but also uh, because it was very soft uh, I believe that the fibers were short and it was very fragile so it was breaking uh, when knitting um, and uh, I know that some people fi might find this annoying, but actually I found it very relaxing uh, because it helped me slow down. Uh, this is lots of like knitting and purling uh, and I feel that kind of uh, stopping to attach the yarn really made me slow down the process and be more present in the process and um, as uh, Carolyn in, in her in one of her last podcast episodes said like you basically turn uh, weakness into a strength and I could really feel it and it was such a mindful uh, knit um, that I really really enjoyed. Uh, it is still a little wet because we had a stormy weather so uh, I took it from blocking mat to show you uh, because I could no longer wait. <laughs> it's been about like four days that it's trying to dry. Um, okay and I hope that in the next episode I will be able to show you um, this cardigan um, completely finished with a zipper. Yeah. The cardigan that my husband was using before had a, a cotton lining. This yarn is very soft and uh, he doesn't find it particularly itchy uh, but if he does uh, I will probably uh, make a lining uh, from this beautiful uh, cotton uh, flannel fabric that I purchased from Merchant and Mills a long time ago. So I wash the fabric so it's ready to be cut and sewn uh, if needed be. Uh, with respect to my works in progress, uh, this is my um, Lulu Slipover by Petit Knit, uh, which is a really cute slipover um, with saddle shoulder construction, one by one uh, ribbing for collar. I decided to go with a turtleneck, um, one by one ribbing around armholes and a really nice um, 
double stitch plates. Uh, so I knitted only one and there will be four, two on the like front piece and two on back piece uh, where you attach, uh, on back piece you attach a button and uh, on front piece there will be a button hole which gives it like really nice and flattering look that I like a lot. Um, so I am knitting this in uh, yarn by John Arbon Textiles. It is the new base uh, which is called uh, Harvest Hues. Uh, this is really a lovely base. Uh, it is 33% uh, uh, BFL or blue face luster, 33% Falklands Merino and 33% Swartables that are locally grown uh, and uh, it's very very soft it's fingering weight or uh, um, it's about uh, it's four, uh, 400 milligrams uh, per 100 grams cane uh, and I really like its texture and its softness and the colors so I was holding it double for my Lulu slipover and for stripes I used other colorways uh, of harvest hues that I will put in the description box below and the main color is colorway peat uh, it's like this really beautiful brown with some kind of greenish and reddish hues uh, which uh, give it like a depth. I love sleepovers because uh, it helped me regulate my body temperature. I can um, like easily, you know, uh, have a little tiny um, uh, shirt be uh, below uh, and uh, can have it on, can take it off. It works for me. So I have lots of vests and sleepovers as you might notice. So the next work in progress that I would like to share with you is this not so thin <laughs> sweater. Uh, this is uh, a 1031 sweater by Ozetta that I am knitting in uh, on six millimeter needles. And uh, as you can see, this is a big squishy cloud of yarn that I intend to use for the same purposes as my husband is using his cardigans and sweaters, meaning when I'm working from home or uh, being at home uh, and want to be like super cozy. Um, I am knitting it in Monaki yarn uh, that I purchased quite a long time ago, maybe du even during the pandemic, uh, directly from Germany um, and it was in my stash waiting for uh, the best project um, and I am holding it double, uh, I am ho holding it double with a strand of uh, DK weight Sori alpaca that is so squishy. It's Odang DK uh, by Farmer's Daughters Fibers. Believe or not, but this is the first time I'm using Candice uh, yarn and uh, it's amazing. I love the color um, and color kind of goes from uh, brownish ochre to purplish uh, and I don't know how much you can see it on camera but it gives it a really nice look and also Suri Alpaca DK looks like boucle so this really really feels like a cloud. Uh, I uh, finished part of the body, uh, one sleeve, uh, there is another sleeve uh, that is almost done and I need one more skein of Odeng yarn uh, that I ordered from uh, Candice shop and waiting to arrive so that I can complete this project. Uh, Odeng is pretty pricey yarn, but I really appreciate uh, Candice's work and her efforts. Um, 
and um, I, I wanted to support uh, her work and her shop. Um, so uh, lately uh, I, I have been trying to be better in knitting uh, two sleeves or two socks parallelly, uh, meaning that I don't knit them on magic loop together but I try to knit them on like different needles uh, like at the same time or almost same time so I need let's say a piece of one sleeve then I go uh, and knit the same uh, length of the other sleeve and going back and forth uh, it really helps complete the sleeves and socks uh, sooner than when you do it uh, just one sleeve and then you are not feeling motivated to do another sleeve. All this to say uh, that this was an um, enjoyable fast knit project and I can't wait for my yarn to arrive and to uh, finish it, hopefully show it in my next podcast episode. Um, there is one more work in progress that I would like to show you uh, and this is these are actually socks that I started long ago and for some reason totally forgot about them uh, and recently when I was reorganizing my stash I rediscovered them uh, these are grandma's ethic socks by James Watts um, and they are cute socks with short row um, heel shaping that, uh, uh, but the most interesting part is actually um, the ruffle that you add uh, at the end and I have been, uh, as I shared earlier about the sleeves, I was knitting two of them parallelly uh, and I can't wait to finish them. Uh, this is knitted in um, wool and twine Corridale sock yarn. Uh, I cannot remember the colorway but that's probably also not really important because she uh, I believe discontinued this yarn base. I am holding it in this beautiful um, bag uh, by uh, Knitting Nelly. Uh, I love her patchwork bags. They're so cute and I'm always late for her shop updates but I hope to snatch a larger one um, in 2024. Uh, last but not least is uh, another uh, pullover uh, project that I am making and let me just um, get it from this bag so I'm holding it in this uh, Pajuta makes uh, bag which is a linen handmade linen bag with this beautiful embroidery um, as I said earlier I really love her bags and uh, I am knitting this pullover on the basis of um, kind of Sunday sweaters slash any other drop shoulder construction sweaters. So this is pretty oversized uh, body or it will be oversized pullover. Um, I am knitting it in one strand of woolen twine um, unspun yarn um, Thrive in colorway uh, rye it's this beautiful kind of natural beigey grayish color um, and I am holding one strand of this yarn with two strands of silk mohair uh, from knitting from olive uh, I love their mohair, it's sustainably made, uh, I'm not sensitive to mohair so I can wear it and um, it's also reasonably priced 
and uh, one colorway is mushroom rose and the other one is ochre brown um, and I also want to make it a little kind of more fun adding um, a color and hands in this beautiful colorway which is Noro Madara I've seen that this is that this has become pretty popular yarn among uh, podcasters and knitters I found this yarn um, last year in Berkeley in Black Squirrel uh, shop uh, what, that I visited with uh, dear Bernice Yamagara when she was visiting the United States. I love this colorway, it's very special to me because of the uh, occasion and I was waiting for kind of a good project to use it for. I uh, was thinking initially maybe I can knit a hat or socks but then I realized that it would be really fun to add a touch of kind of color to um, this pullover so I will keep you posted how it looks like and if I kind of decided to do it in the end because sometimes I change my mind uh, I want to do something and then I just change my mind and like end up like doing something else where my creativity inspiration flow gets me and this is something that I really like about knitting um, like you can plan to some extent but there is always this space for exploration and space for uh, discovery and space for doing something else that you hadn't planned for and that's really something exciting that keeps me like attached to knitting and obsessed by knitting for such a long time okay so I think that I showed you all my uh, works in progress um, I have one project planned that I would like to show you um, that is August Hat by um, Sari Nordlund. I actually knitted uh, this hat last year for, uh, for a friend of mine um, and I will put a picture, insert a picture so that you can see how it looks like. I really liked it, uh, my friend likes it and I would like to knit one for myself. Uh, Uh, I have this cane uh, of Peace Fleece yarn uh, and also uh, some leftovers of Suri Alpaca from Ocean by the Sea that I used for my uh, Felicity sweater and I plan to hold them together uh, for this beautiful cabled pattern. Um, so we'll keep you posted. Okay. Now I'm going to have a sip of coffee and then um, show you something very very exciting which is this book um, Magical Year, the book of pagan holidays uh, written by Christina Romero uh, with illustrations by Tiana Lukovic and published by Selena Books. Uh, this book finally arrived from Spain. It was a long journey and I really appreciate uh, how folks um, from Selena Books were so patient and nice and kind and wanted to make sure that I get my beloved book. Uh, Tiana Lukovic is a Serbian illustrator living in Belgium. Uh, I have been following her on Instagram uh, for quite a long time and I adore her illustrations. Uh, it's if like someone is illustrating like from my imagination if it makes sense 
they really speak to me um, and I was so excited when I saw that she published this lovely book and um, let me show you some of the pictures so look at these illustrations they are so beautiful so this is wheel of the year highly recommend this book if you are into whimsical witchy foresty aesthetics okay uh, now I would like to talk about the books that I am reading uh, so I just read a book uh, which is hard um, and this is really interesting book uh, if you read Circe by Madeline Miller uh, you will probably like this book too um, uh, Circe is based on uh, Greek mythology, which is hard, is based on Norse mythology and it also, similarly as Circe, it tells a story uh, um, of like gods and their relationships and their world from a woman's perspective, um, a woman as a witch as mother as being different um, and I really love uh, how um, like over the last decade um, there have been more and more mythology based books and in particular uh, based on like women uh, women telling the story uh, because it's been kind of um, voice that hasn't always been present in literature or traditions. So I highly recommend this book uh, if you're into this genre. Um, I, I believe that you, you might like it. So the next book uh, that I was reading um, was the book uh, Sons Daughters by Ivana Borožić. Uh, I read this book in its original edition uh, in Croatian language and this is an amazing and painful and powerful book. Um, tells story about bodies and oppression over bodies uh, whether it is societal oppression with bodies that don't match our uh, like gender or bodies that are um, damaged so to speak uh, by injury um, or female bodies and how society exercises power and violence over these bodies. Haig, uh, or Forgotten Folk Tales Retold. Uh, this is a book of um, folk tales told uh, from a different perspective. Lastly, uh, what I would like to talk about is my journals and my pens so um, as we are at the beginning of the new year of course it means uh, new journals and for 2024 I opted for Hobonichi um, I have to say that over so many years I have explored many different um, journals uh, from Moleskine, uh, Lighterm, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this well, um, Habonichi, uh, Midori, uh, and this year I decided to go uh, with Habonichi. So I have uh, this Habonichi weeks uh, for 
uh, my work and everything work related and I have Hobonichi days for everything um, related to my kind of inner life or private life. This is all uh, I wanted to share with you today. I wish you all Happy New Year. I hope you have, first of all, safety, then lots of health, lots of joy. Please be compassionate to yourself because the times are very hard and very hurtful and we need lots of con compassion first to like ourselves then to those uh, who are around us whether it is like partners, family, pets, children or um, neighbors, patients etc. I also hope uh, that you continue to watch this podcast in the next year. If you like the content I make, please click on subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the new content and um, subscribing and commenting really helps grow uh, this channel. Of course, if you appreciate my work and uh, want to make a tip, uh, you can do it through coffee account. Of course, if you can, um, this content will remain uh, for free, of course, uh, but any, um, um, any kind of support is appreciated given the amount of time and effort that goes in making these videos. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a lovely, lovely day and I hope to see you all very soon. Thank you! Thank you.